are now on lab 5, introducing the concept of localization. The basic idea is we want to figure out where on a map we are at any given time. For both lab 5 tasks, I'll print the grid layout, represented by X's for cells that we've traveled to, and dots for cells that we haven't been to yet. Under that, I'll print the robot pose, which is just the current state of the robot values for X, Y, the grid cell number, and orientation. For task 1, uh, we have this 4x4 four four grid here with the origin 00, zero at the center, and we're given the option to calculate localization by either triangulation or trilateration. And I chose the trilateration algorithm because it allows us to find the exact XY coordinates of our robot at any given cell on this grid without the need for calculating any angles. You only need distances, so as long as you can find out the distance from your current location to three other known points, you're good to go. Trilateration specifically is the backbone of how this first task works, so I'll go over how that plays real quick first. Trilateration is actually the same method used in a lot of GPS systems for pinpointing where you are on the planet, given only satellite locations and distances. So I'm just going to use this example here that I found online to explain. Say we know the XY coordinates of all three of these satellites. If you were to measure the distance from your robot in unknown space out here to this blue satellite, for example, you can then draw a circle around that satellite with a radius of the same length. And now you'll know that for sure that robot is located somewhere on that blue circle. If you expand the same concept with a second satellite, green in this case, you measure the distance from your robot to the satellite, it'll be different than the blue one, but you're still going to form a green circle around here and you know that the robot lies somewhere on that green circle as well. So with this concept, you've narrowed down a ton of options to just these two points here, uh, where the blue and green circles intersect. So tri trilateration uses a third circle to calculate precisely where the robot is, because now the single point where all three of these circles overlap will be your robot's position or I guess in this case the satellites will overlap where your GPS receiver is. For our lab purposes we need exact XY values so here are the distance formulas that I used. Um, rather than satellites I have four pillars in the corners of my grid that I'll show you in a minute. They're all different colors and they all have known XY values and those are what I'll use here for X1, Y1, X2, Y2 and X3, Y3 in the formulas. The robot's X and Y values are still unknown, but I can find R1, R2, and R3 squared by using the distance sensor that the robot has, and then squaring the value that it reads back. Expanding the three equations and subtracting them from each other gives you a system of only two equations and two unknowns, um, and that we can rewrite as this AX plus BY equals C, and DX plus EY equals F. And you'll see down here, A through F are broken down, but taken directly from that system of equations. Um, the solution for the system gives us our XY values for where the robot is, and that's assuming that E times A does not equal B times T, um, because that'd be dividing by zero. So in my code, I just throw up a little flag in that rare case uh, that just says that it's a divide by zero error. Here are the details on the grid that we're using. It's got the details on the pillars as well and the given coordinates that we're going to be using for task one. X and Y have ranges from negative 20 to 20. And it looks like all the pillar coordinates are given in advance. Uh, they're all in the corners. Negative 20, 20 will be the yellow, 20, 20 will be the red, etc. Um, just as a heads up, uh, the world file we were given has everything on its side 90 degrees, so our environment will look more like this than the last image, with cell 16 on the top right blue corner and cell 1 on the bottom left over by the yellow pillar. 
Before I show where my task 1 is at the moment, I'll demo my beta version of the code from last week, uh, right after getting trilateration working. Forgive me, but I'm gonna run it at every single square to prove to myself that it works because I'm having trouble at the moment on my final build, specifically the scanning and printing at cells 2 and 3. This build uh, simply scans the environment until three centered pillar distances are gathered before running the trilateration function to find the robot's x and y coordinates and then it uses that x and y to find and print which grid cell the robot's in before stopping. I'll run the first cell normally but try to speed through the rest. So down on the console you can see that the pillar object details with the three distances that are scanned show up here. Um, the fourth pillar distance that's not being used in the algorithm just shows up as a negative one. But you can see that the red at x20, y20 is at a distance 23 inches. Yellow was red at 46 and green was red at 31. And so here is the x and y that were found through trilateration. And at the bottom is the grid cell number those coordinates are located in. So I'll try to run through the rest quickly, but you know how it is. Okay, looks like every one of them read right. This one's reading one. We have our three distances. Uh, Alright, let's see what's going on with my task one. To consider task one actually completed, I need to expand that trilateration localization concept that I just showed you in a way that the robot travels to every single grid cell and prints which cells it's been to and which it hasn't using this format here. I had trouble traveling around to each of the cells, so I simplified the path a bit. It always travels and scans to the left, and every time the robot gets too close to a wall, it'll drive down to the next row, and then reset itself on the far right column before starting the scan and left movement again. You'll notice a lot less going on on the command space down here, the console space rather, than before because we actually lose points for having too many prints. So what you'll see instead is that simple print of the cells that have been traveled so far, right above the robot pose, which is the XY grid cell number and orientation. It'll print a new grid cell each time right before scanning a new cell. So I'll run that now and we'll see how it plays. The two cells that I've been having trouble with are cells 2 and 3. No matter what I seem to do, the robot doesn't want to scan the environments here, or when it gets here. And everything I change seems to make things much worse, so hopefully I'll have that ironed out before next week's due date.
see there that rather than scanning that third grid cell, it just moved right on past it, so it won't show up as an X there on the grid. Forgot I can mute this robot. We're coming up here to the second cell that gets ignored. You'll see right here it just goes down to the next row rather than trying to scan that one. It's the bug I'm trying to fix. Okay, so that's all the squares. Um, it kept adding an X rather than a dot for those that were traveled to. Uh, these two are still bugged, but I'll figure that out before this is due. Let's move on to the next one. Alright, Lab 5, Task 2. Forgive me in advance for the sniffles. I'm definitely losing to allergies this season. Pollen 1, AJ0. Anyways, uh, task 2, we're ditching the colored pillars in the triangulation, and it asks us to find the robot's location based solely on whether the distance sensors are reading walls or not. Rather than having the robot spin at each cell like the last task to detect if there's a north, south, east, or western wall, I narrow down which cell the robot's in by first finding a path that moves the robot to every cell without hitting any of the walls and charting which cardinal direction the robot's facing as it passes over each cell, like north, south, east, or west. And the grid is already given to us in advance, and it shows which walls exist for each cell um, way ahead of time. So using only the three distance sensor readings and the compass direction that I'm moving in at the time, I can eliminate many of the other cell possibilities based on which cells have what walls around them to begin with. Um, that was a bit convoluted, so here's a visual example. Uh, this is the task 2 map with the darker lines being the walls. Um, if I'm, say, driving this purple robot here in the west direction to the left, and all three sensors, the left, the right, and the front, are detecting a wall, then there is no other option except that I am at cell number 1. Because if you look carefully, there's no other cells here with that same wall arrangement where if you're looking left, all three of them would be covered. Um, here's another example. <clears throat> if I'm driving this blue robot north, and the right sensor doesn't detect any walls, but the front and the left sensors do, then I'm definitely in cell 5. Any cells that have the same orientation or the same sensor readings, like uh, if I'm driving north through 12 and 8, which I do, we can further separate um, which one is most likely the grid cell by using the distance that I've traveled or the time I've traveled or something like that. So let's go to the bot. Okay, so here's a task two. Um, I've got a robot here. I'm gonna try to angle this down a little bit so you can get the top down view and see that the robot doesn't actually hit any walls even though it gets pretty close in some cases. Uh, just like the last task, the console is going to print the visited cells and the robot pose again. So I'll go ahead and start that. And you'll see them printing only when a new cell is visited, not the old, not if it's re revisiting a cell. Also, um, if you see a little bit of jankiness in the robot's movement at some turns, 
it's because it's deciding whether to spin left or right based on which sensor is reading the larger distance at the time. Um, in instances where the left and right distance sensors are close to the same or the same, they'll briefly struggle to decide which way to spin. I also wrote an exit condition for this controller that when all the spots are visited and the dots all turn to X's, then it'll just stop the robot. Here's one of those turns where the left and right readings are about the same. Okay, all the dots were replaced with X's, so everything's been visited and it stopped. I'll restart that and run it a bit faster. And as you can see, it only printed when a new cell was visited. That's Lab 5 wrapped.